This is an assignment that will help you complete your upcoming beaker assignment. We're not going to use the same molecules given to you in your beaker assignment, but you will be able to use these same approaches to complete the assignment that you've get, been given. So in this example, we're going to use methane, methanol, carbon dioxide, water, and salt. So it's going to be the same scenario where these molecules were all mixed in a beaker and you have to summarize all the intra and intermolecular forces. Okay, so first step is to determine where or which layer each of these compounds would be in, in the beaker. So what you have to do there is determine what the intramolecular bonds are so you can determine what layer it's going to go into. So let's start with methane. So methane, if you draw your Lewis structure, looks like this. And we can see it's made only of carbon-hydrogen bonds. So that's the only bond type we have to figure out. So we're going to do our delta EN to figure out what type of bond it is. So we're going to take, subtract the electronegativity of hydrogen from carbon, because carbon is the larger number. Uh, so it's going to be 2.6 minus 2.2, which works out to be 0 0.4, okay? We know that bonds, delta ENs, can be summarized essentially like this, that if it's more than 2, it's ionic. If it's less than 0.5, it's nonpolar covalent. And if it's somewhere in the middle, it's polar. So in this case, because we're less than 0.5, we know that this is a nonpolar bond, okay? And because it's made of all nonpolar bonds, we would put this molecule in the nonpolar layer. Okay? So that's our first molecule. Next one we're going to take a look at is methanol, which if you draw your Lewis structure will look like this. So we've already determined that this bond, this bond, and this bond is all nonpolar. Okay, we just calculated that up here. So now we need to know what the carbon oxygen bond does and the oxygen hydrogen bond does. So we're going to again do our delta EN. Um, so we're going to have our electronegativity, let's do carbon oxygen of oxygen, subtract from that carbon. So in this case, we're going to have. 3.4, if we look this up in the table, subtracted 2.6, so that's going to be 0 0.8. This fits into that polar section, so we know this bond is polar. Okay, so right here we have polar, this is nonpolar, nonpolar, nonpolar. Okay, um, the next bond that we have to predict is oxygen hydrogen. which is going to be, again, our 3.4, but this time we're going to subtract the value for hydrogen, which is 2.2. So we're going to be left with 1.2, which, again, fits in this polar section because it's not completely at 2. So this is also a polar bond. So the problem is here, we have a polar section and a nonpolar section. So it's trickier to predict if it's going to be in the polar layer or the nonpolar layer. So what we do here is we use the rule that we learned that uh, if there is less than 10 carbons, for every one hydroxide group, so one OH group, the molecule will act polar. Because we have one hydroxide and only one carbon, okay, we're going to assume that this is going to act polar. If there was something like 10 or uh, 12, we would assume it acts not more nonpolar if there was only one OH group. Okay. The next one we're going to take a look at is CO2. Okay. If you draw the Lewis structure, it looks like this. Okay. We've actually already calculated the EN of carbon-oxygen bonds, which is right here. Okay, 
right here. We've already determined that that's a polar bond. So we only have two polar bonds here. So we know that the carbon oxygen bond is polar. So because we only have two, well four, polar bonds, we're gonna assume this is also polar. Okay. Next molecule we have to take a look at is water. We have already actually calculated as well that the oxygen-hydrogen bond is polar. So if we have a Lewis structure that's only oxygen-hydrogen bonds, and we know these bonds are polar, this also is going to be in the polar layer. Last one we have to take a look at is sodium chloride. This is new. We do have to calculate the delta EN for this. Okay, so our delta EN in this case is going to be the electronegativity of chlorine minus the electronegativity of sodium, which is going to be 3.2 minus 0.9, so that's going to be 2.3. This is greater than 2, so this is going to be ionic. What we know about what happens to ionic compounds, or most ionic compounds when they go in water, is that they split into their ions. So what we're going to have is some sodium ions floating around and chlorine ions floating around, okay? This ionic bond will break in the presence of water, so we don't need to draw them right beside each other. So, uh, like we said, they're soluble in water, so these ionic compounds are going to go in our polar layer. So now that we know where everything goes, we need to actually draw this all out. So what I'm going to do on my sheet draw a rough outline of a beaker. Okay. I also want to separate it into two layers. Okay. We're going to have our nonpolar layer on top and our polar layer on the bottom. So we've already determined where, what layer everything goes in. So we have methane up at the top here. We determine isopropyl, uh, sorry, methanol goes here. We know um, carbon dioxide is going to go in here. We know water is going to go in here. And we also know our ions are going to go in here. They don't have to be close. What we want to do now is create our legend, okay, so that we can tell the reader what all our different colors mean to summarize our bonds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, so we have six bonds that we need to summarize, so you can pick six colors. Try to pick colors that are easily distinguishable, so it's easy to mark what everything is. Here's my six colors I'm going to use. I'm going to say red is my polar bonds. I'm going to say blue is my non-polar. Okay, you should write this out in full, but we're going to say green is our van der Waals. I'm going to say uh, orange is my dipole dipoles. Blue, uh, purple is going to be my hydrogen bonds and pinks are going to be my ion dipoles, but you write this out in full and just tight on space. So what you want to do is show enough examples that your teacher knows you understand it, okay? So do more than one or two, but just you don't have to do it for every single possibility. So the first thing I'm going to do is with red is go in and label some of my polar bonds, which I've already predicted. So I may do one in water, one in carbon. I have a couple polar bonds here. So I've labeled a bunch of examples. Then I'm going to go back in and label some more examples of my nonpolar bonds. So I'm going to maybe do one or two here, a couple here, to show that I understand that these bonds are nonpolar. Okay? So that's my intramolecular bonds. After you've done that, you also will want to label in as well so your teacher knows that you know where some areas of partial negative and partial positive charge is. We know anytime there is an unequal sharing of electrons, 
there's going to be partial charge. Okay, so I've labeled in some of my areas of charge so my teacher knows I know what I'm doing. Okay, now that that's all done, I can start to move into my intramolecular forces. Let's start with my dipole dipole. Dipole dipole we know is an attraction between two areas of partial charge. So in dipole dipoles, though, I want to um, distinguish them from hydrogen bonds. So I'm going to look for an area of partial positive charge that is not a hydrogen. In this case, we have two opportunities, a carbon here and a carbon here. Okay, and we want to find an area of partial opposite charge. So uh, one example I may do is between carbon and oxygen here, or maybe I want to do between this carbon and this oxygen. Okay, uh, You'll have opportunities for more examples, but I'm showing here I'm using different atoms on different molecules in both cases so that the teacher knows I understand that there's more than one possibility. If you just do the same uh, attraction every single time, you're always drawing the dipole-dipole from carbon dioxide to the oxygen water, that's only showing me you know that one example. Pick different examples and different molecules to show your understanding. The next one for hydrogen bonds, I do want to use those partially positive hydrogens this time. So there's one here in water I can use, so maybe I attract this one to the carbon dioxide. There's another partial positive here. Uh, maybe I put this one to the negative in water. Again, I'm using different molecules in different places to show my understanding. Um, ion dipoles. Okay, I have two ions here I can use. This is when there's an attraction between an ion with a full charge and something with a partial opposite charge. So in this case, I have something like chlorine. Chlorine is negative, so it likes this hydrogen that's partially positive. It also likes this carbon because it's partially positive. Also, this positive sodium likes negative things, so it's going to like this oxygen. It's also going to like this oxygen. So again, I've showed lots of different examples showing I know that it can work with positive and negative ions, and I've used all the different molecules. Last one is Van der Waals, which is the easiest of all of them. This goes in between any and all molecules. You probably want to leave this one to the end because you can see I'm being a little strategic and filling up some of the space. Okay. It also can happen in between layers. So this is the only attraction that's going to cross that polar nonpolar line. Okay. So you can see the more you practice, the easier it gets. And this should be a good starting point to help you set up for your beaker assignment.